Uh, so to start off, let's talk about what uh, AWS Satina is and why we use it and some some features about the, the main service. So uh, Athena is a serverless framework and Yeah, uh, can you hear Nardos, guys? Uh, I think she's con disconnected. Yeah. Okay, so... Yeah, maybe I can present the slide because she has shared with me. Yes. Yeah, okay. Can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. Yeah, okay. So, as uh, hi guys, at first, <laughs> uh, I'm Deborah and I'm uh, excited to be here. So I'll just show you a basic introduction to uh, uh, AWS Satina in Glue. So AWS Satina is a serverless uh, interactive query service, uh, uh, which means we don't have to worry about uh, maintaining a server uh, and uh, that's actually uh, very nice. And it helps to analyze data directly from our uh, Amazon S3 service with Amazon S3 uh, using standard SQL. Uh, which I will be showing you uh, later. And Amazon Athena can be connected to uh, many data sources. So it can connect to operational databases, data warehouses, uh, yeah, to S3 data lakes and the like. And it's, it's also easy to connect to uh, BI tools. Uh, so that means we can easily see the query outputs using the dashboards. Um, so, uh, Athena is also used to analyze unstructured, same structured and structured data, which means we can query a JSON uh, file as if it's uh, written in a database. And it can also be used to run ad hoc queries. Um, so it uh, directly accesses data uh, from the source and it allows us to query and analyze our data. And this comes in handy when the data we're dealing with is huge, uh, which was the case uh, uh, in a company where I worked at, uh, which we had to manipulate around four terabytes of data. And when using uh, uh, Athena, it helps us uh, generate quick insights on huge data without uh, populating it into another uh, database. Uh, so, as I said, uh, Athena integrates with Amazon QuickSight for easy data visualization uh, and other business intelligence tools so that uh, clients can actually query the raw data and see insights for themselves. It can also um, integrate with AWS Glue Data Catalog. AWS Glue is another Amazon service uh, which stores uh, metadata about uh, our S3 uh, data or other uh, data sources. So it's basically an integration tool which where we can uh, store the, our metadata for the different data sources that we might be using for our companies. So it's Athena is easily integrated to AWS Glue, uh, so which makes our lives very easy. So we have the information that's needed to query our uh, data sources on Glue, and then we can use that information to query using Athena. So, um, yeah, so Glue uh, prepares data for analysis. So, it, Glue also has, besides the data catalog, it also has um, uh, a place where you can uh, process or analyze the data yourself. So, it's called detailed jobs. Uh, maybe we might not be seeing that today, but yeah. So. Uh, the data catalog uh, 
just organizes the metadata uh, as tables in databases so that that can also be queryable strutting. Yeah. And we, we can connect uh, the data catalog with the, we can set using AWS identity and access management policies, we can restrict uh, the amount of data someone can see. So, and that comes in very useful when we want to restrict uh, access to a certain data source. Yeah, and uh, AWS Glue uh, uses uh, crawlers and classifiers to infer uh, and extract schema information about our data sources. Yeah, I think this is pretty much it. We can pass to the demo. So yeah, as I said, um, uh, Amazon Athena is basically helps us to carry uh, data. It, it's used it, it, it's used as an interface so that it creates an abstraction that's uh, similar to a table so that we can use SQL uh, queries to actually uh, uh, query our data sources. So for this purpose, uh, I have paired a data. This, so we're gonna be querying this data. As you can see, it's stored in a 3 and it's a bunch of CSV files, right? So this CSV files, uh, we might not know uh, the schema information, but let's assume that we do. And what we need, uh, uh, is that a question? So, yeah, so AWS, so AWS is, uh, uh, AWS is a bunch of services that uh, helps uh, manage uh, the, our data. It, there are many services in AWS actually. So there is a data storage, which is the ACS3 that I was showing you. This is the uh, data storage that AWS provides so that it's uh, we can easily store our data sources here and connect them to our different services to query and manipulate and uh, do multiple things with them. There are also other services, as you can see here, there is AWS Glue, Athena, which we're gonna be seeing today. Um, and definitely others. So we also have RDS, which is uh, the relational database system that's provided by AWS. So it's a cloud uh, service uh, that we're able to use. So it's not free. Most of AWS services uh, uh, are not free. They cost as you use them. So for for example, for AWS Athena, it's cost uh, it's cost is determined by how much data we are scanning, uh, and it's it has its own uh, pricing system. Uh, yeah, but maybe you can check it out, or I can leave some uh, resources for that. I think you would be using that in future um, weeks as well. Athena Katani. So yeah, okay. So. Yeah, so where were we? So yeah, this is the data that we're gonna be querying. So what we need of, to query this data is, we need to know where the data is located first, and then we need to know uh, what type of uh, format it is so that it's uh, it can be uh, uh, queried using AWS Athena. AWS Athena, is, it's built on top of Presto, which basically uh, handles uh, huge data uh, on uh, distributed servers. So yeah, so so we can create the table if we know the schema, if we know what type of data our CSV files contain, we can just use uh, this query, as you can see. So it basically contains each columns with their uh, types and some other information, which is this is just the input format of the data and then the output format and the location of where our data is located. So if we run this, now we, are, we have created a table and we'll be able to uh, query this table, right? So if we run this, you can see that uh, the table has access to our data, but it has some, yeah, so, 
it's able to query the data, but as you can see, it's not neatly done. There are some quotations, as you can see. Uh, yeah, so these this things uh, can, can actually be inferred using AWS Glue. So if you know the, the exact structure and format of your data, you can use Athena just like this. You can create manual tables and query them. Now that we have this table, we can query any type of query and then connect this to a dashboard and see the outputs. Uh, but for better results and for better uh, schema extraction, schema information extraction, we also use AWS Glue. So uh, AWS Glue is uh, uh, a service that, that AWS provides. It's an integration tool, as I said before. So what we do is go to the crawlers and I have already created uh, the crawler, but I'll show you how it, it might be configured. It's very, it's fairly easy. So uh, when we uh, create a crawler, it uh, allows us to set up the following properties. So yeah, so we create the name, the tags, and the different descriptions that we want the crawler, that we want to define the crawler, and then we provide the AC3 data source right here so this this location um, points to uh, this uh, data source so once we have that uh, we choose uh, an IMO and then we uh, select a database where we want uh, this new table this new interface to be created at and then uh, we can set different uh, uh, configurations and properties here. This is usually uh, for when we want the crawler uh, to run on schedules. That means, let's say, if we're uh, trying to crawl a data source that's uh, updating in real time, and that the schema uh, is inferred on a schedule, and then in that case, we have to set uh, the properties here uh, so that uh, the glue knows what to do with the uh, schema, uh, the schema generated. So if it changes or if it evolves, if the schema evolves, what should I do? So it asks you that question, and that's what you said here. So we, you might say that you should update the table definition, or you might say um, ignore the changes. So uh, you can set that based on your needs. Uh, and then the frequency, this is the uh, crawler uh, scheduler. So you can set that on demand so that it runs uh, when you, you need it, or you can set it hourly, daily, weekly, as we uh, see. So uh, we do that and, and that's it. So basically, once we create our crawler, um, so this was the crawler that I was showing you, this one, so uh, we run it. Right, so what this uh, crawler uh, will be doing would be uh, classifying the data type that you have pointed it to. So it would go to this location and see what type of data it contains. First, it would see what type of format the data files are, and then it tries to infer the schemas based on the data content of most of the data. So it would try to uh, get the columns, it would try to infer the data types, uh, the delimiters of the files in HC, and it stores this information in a table, so in a database. So uh, if we go here, uh, this is our database where the, the crawler, so I have done this previously, that's why I'm not running the crawlers now, but uh, so if this is the table that was created by running the crawler. So if we go here, uh, we can simply see uh, so the name, and then we, we can see the schema. So uh, by reading those files, it has inferred uh, this type of schema, right? So yeah. So now that it has created this table, that means that this metadata by itself can be queried through Athena. So if we come here and query. So uh, we can see uh, the different uh, tables created under the database, Tasting Tain Academy. 
so this is the one that was created now by CC Flight Stadium. And we can also see the coolants. Yeah, so for, uh, we can actually can set this for a specific uh, table. Uh, so it would be, Yeah, so these are the columns, the, their positions, and different information. So you can query uh, the metadata that was created by AWS Glue through Athena. So we don't need a different uh, form of integration. That's uh, they work hand in hand. So as you can see, we, we didn't even have to uh, do anything else to be, to query the tables created by AWS Glue. So uh, let's query the actual data that was scrolled, so select. Yeah, so this is uh, the data that was, the table that was created using uh, AWS Glue, right? So now we were able to query this data and generate the different insights. So um, for a small, for a small uh, size data, this might not feel like a huge deal, but when you have uh, data size in terabytes and petabytes and querying it in minutes to get insights is a huge deal in uh, companies. So yeah. And when using AWS Athena, the other thing that we need uh, to focus on to optimize uh, the speed and to reduce the cost is storing it in Parquet's format. So uh, Parquet uh, is a, uh, just a file format like CSV, but it's very suitable for uh, big data analysis and it works well with uh, systems like Hive and, and Presto, which uh, AWS Athena uses simply because uh, it, uh, it works in chunks. That means, uh, for example, if you see the JSON file or uh, text files, it would process a row by row. Uh, but when it comes to Parquet files, it would uh, break them into chunks or uh, groups of the batches of data. So that means uh, it, our AWS Athena wouldn't need to scan the whole data to find uh, the different filters that we're giving it through uh, our select statement. So, for example, if we want to select just stars in capital, uh, this was based on the CSV files, right? So, this would scan the whole data because it's uh, a text uh, format. Um, okay, uh, let me see, I think. Yeah, so we're if we want just one column, the AWS Athena uh, would scan the whole uh, uh, file to find this column because it will need to process through uh, the data uh, line by line. But if we actually use this for, uh, if we actually convert our files into park rate and then uh, query them using Athena, it would. Uh, uh, it would reduce our time uh, and also reduce the cost because it's only accessing the, that specific data that we want. So, uh, for example, this merge table was created after converting the CSV files uh, into Parquet. So,
So it would be a different uh, case if we actually query a column uh, on a Parkway file format. So it's it, it's much faster than the other. And you would see the difference when trying to query a, a huge uh, data. Uh, yeah, and there are also other methods that you can uh, use to optimize uh, AWS Athena or in general, uh, big data analysis. Uh, and some of them uh, are partitioning your data sources and optimizing your uh, SQL queries. So, yeah, I think that's pretty much it from my side. So, if you have any questions, Hello. Uh, so yeah, it's preferred if you use it for big data, but as I showed you, I used it on uh, small size data. So you can also use it for uh, small size data, but it would be more useful if you uh, use it for uh, uh, big data because uh, because of like cost reasons. Uh, sure, I could show you, but I don't have a JSON file at hand. But yeah, it works the same way. So, so if you just uh, give the location, uh, of where your uh, unstructured or like same structured data is loca located at and it run your uh, glue cr crawler, it would uh, work the same way. It would give you, it would generate the tables and you can query it uh, using uh, Athena. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But since you're not using it, you might not uh, have questions at this moment, but uh, being exposed to such kind of tools uh, would be helpful in the future. And if you're interested, I can also share some resources so that you could look more into it. Yeah. Cool. Any other questions? Uh, that's not up to me. <laughs> Maybe Yuridia can answer that. So are you going to give them an AWS account for free? <laughs> yeah, sorry guys. The one I mentioned was uh, quick, quick, quick insight, quick insight. Sorry. <laughs> 